Hello and welcome to Dairy Pod. I'm John Penry from Dairy Australia. In this episode, Dairy Australia's National People Lead, Nick Fuller, and Dairy SA's Extension Coordinator and Workforce Attraction Project Lead, Alberta Bado Yuboa, speak to South Australian dairy farmer Sarah Moore about finding and attracting staff to dairy farm jobs from the backpacker community. They explore what a talent community is, as well as how to engage with backpackers and make the most of the time they're on farm to ensure that it's a great experience for both the employer and the employee. Hi everyone, I'm Mick Fuller, National People Lead at Dairy Australia, and welcome to our third instalment of our people-related podcast here at Dairy Australia. The purpose of these sessions is to talk with farmers who are doing good things in the employment area and share some of their learnings, what's gone well, what things would they do differently in the future uh, with our audience. And we're really fortunate today to be joined by South Australian region farmer Sarah Moore, in addition to our workforce attraction lead for the region, Alberta Bedu uh, Jaboa. Uh, welcome, guys, and thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Mick, for the introduction. No worries. So, uh, look, today's uh, conversation centres around talent communities, and in particular, uh, a particular group, our working holiday visa holders, who are more commonly known as backpackers. So during this session, we'll talk about why this group is important to our industry, what we can do to engage that this particular community, how to make um, the most of the time that a backpacker is on farm. So it ends up being a great experience for both the farmer and the backpacker. So just to set the scene, uh, if it needed any more setting, that availability of a skilled workforce remains one of the top issues facing our farmers nationally. And this shortage impacts farm output, work-life balance, succession, and many other things. Um, so, Sarah, uh, if I can start with you, we met uh, recently at the Australian Dairy Conference, and I couldn't help but pick up that you do have a slight accent. Um, would you mind sharing with the audience a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Australia and, and to the, this South Australian region in particular? Absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, I'm from Manchester in the UK. Uh, apparently, the last four years, my accent has softened a little bit. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah, it's not as strong as it used to be, apparently. No, can I hardly tell. Uh, yeah. So um, I came over here four years ago now as the, the average typical backpacker looking to live life in Australia for a year or two. And uh, little did I know that I actually I'd settle down and start managing a dairy farm and not go back home mm. yeah. were you were you from a dairy area in manchester no my entire background is all in childcare. i've got no agriculture experience no knowledge or learning previously yeah. i stepped into the role as a backpacker just wanted to try something different yeah and i guess uh i was a backpacker once and uh, i think we we had an earlier conversation that when you're a backpacker you perhaps look for opportunities that you uh, that are, that are totally different because you want to experience something different than you would have uh, back in your home country. So was was that the case with you? Did you did you seek out that experience, or did the experience find you? Um, not really. I was a bit different. Um, I have a, a lot of backpackers. They're a similar story to you, but for myself, um, I was stuck during COVID. Um, so we were actually travelling and working in Melbourne when COVID hit, and we just thought, well. Luckily, I've got family in Adelaide that we came back to and stayed with them. And it took about a week and I was quite bored and frustrated about being inside. So I found the dairy farm as a way to keep myself busy during COVID. Yeah. Slightly different, but... Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So four years down the track, um, tell us a little bit about um, the farm that you're working on, what your role is, um, uh, what what's happening there. Yep, so I'm on a farm up in the Clare Valley and we're milking average about 500 cows. Um, and I, like I said, I started off as a backpacker and then just kept learning a little bit more. Um, I did take six months out, or probably four months out while COVID settled down and did a bit of travelling. And then once I'd run out of money, um, I quickly came back to the farm and that's when I started taking on more of a managerial role. Uh, and now I manage the staff, manage the herd, the nutrition, and pretty much, yeah, manage the farm now. 
well, you've come a long way in four years. And um, yeah, uh, heard of around five hundred. How many? How many employees uh, on the farm? So we've got three full time, four full time staff, mm-hmm. and then six backpackers. Uh, okay. Okay. Very good. So I, I guess uh, uh, you, you've you've got a particular perspective from from both being a backpacker yourself and now as a farm manager on you know what makes a great backpacker, what makes a great backpacker also a great um, farm employee. So um, that's a that's a fantastic story. Um, so I I guess let's let's start with. A couple of sort of broad questions. When we think of talent communities, and Alberta jump in here too, uh, what what do we mean by this? Uh, because I guess it's it's a bit of a HR term, but you know, you, your average person out there might be sort of asking a more fundamental question. But what do we actually mean by a talent community? What comes to mind? Yeah, Alberta. Sure. Okay, so for me, talent communities have become quite popular, and recently a powerful tool or the new norm for um, professional hiring companies and employers to use in recruiting people. I believe there's a cohort of people who are, who could be exceptional candidates for your firm or company, but may currently be facing circumstances that prevent them from joining your company. And the essence of you as a farm business or an employer is to make sure that your name comes to mind first when a candidate is ready to make a move. And I believe that Daniel is making the right investments in these areas. A podcast like this is one of them where we are targeting backpackers and providing them with the right information as to how to make a move when they are ready. We also have our daily jobs matter website that provides them with all the information they need as to how working on a dairy farm looks like. And you have people in my road, the workforce attraction leads, who are on job sites, um, search engines, interacting with people on Facebook, Gumtree, and all like backpacker boards, just to provide them with any career advice or recruitment opportunities that are on dairy farms. So I believe we are well positioned and interacting with all the agricultural talent communities that are in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Alberta. So what what you're saying is that that particular community, there's many, many different communities out there yeah. with, when it comes to talent and backpackers are just one of those communities. It's a community that's always existed. And so a farmer might be sort of uh, listening to this and saying, so what? They've always been a community. Um, they've always been there. Um, what's 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 new about this? And I guess um, the the thing that comes to mind is, whilst there are a community out there, uh, we still need to build a bridge for them to actually come to our industry because they don't necessarily, apart from people like Sarah, uh, they don't organically find their way um, into our industry. We need to make it easier for them. Yeah. Um, it's a competitive. Uh, employment market out there, um, including working holiday visa holders, they can spend their time literally wherever they want. And, you know, Australia has almost full employment. They've got lots of options. So it's a matter of making our option, our industry option, um, something that is attractive for them. Okay. All right. I get it. Um, So we we seem to continue to hold a, a historical view um, of what an, an ideal employee looks like. That employee would look like historically. Um, um, uh, they would have the ability to work full-time. Uh, they will have had previous experience um, and live regionally. And so um, they would normally tick all those boxes historically for for a farmer to actually um, consider them um, a great employee. I guess... Uh, we, we don't have that luxury anymore um, with regards to prior experience. So why can't we just rely on this sort of historical view in your mind and in your experience um, uh, for, you know, to provide our next generation of farmers? Alberta? Yeah. 
Um, I believe that thinking local in terms of getting people on farm is always the best. But just like you said, will that be sufficient to meet the increasing demand for agricultural products? With an aging agricultural population and the younger people sometimes not being interested in pursuing agricultural um, careers, um, we have farmers' children who may decide to go for a different pathway. And if we want the farm to be maintained, then we'll probably have to rely on someone from outside or within who has an agricultural skills or without them. So I believe that it's good to think local, but more often than not, the demand for agricultural labor exceeds the workforce that is available. And Australia can always benefit from a mix of diverse talent, both locally and internationally. And that is when we may try to look outside the scope of what we have locally here. Some farmers may decide to even sell their farms. And if they want to meet the economic and technological needs that they have, they'll probably have to partner with another company or a partner who is overseas that can help them to achieve this. So I believe that farmers are beginning to look outside because that provides them with um, people who come in, holiday makers, skilled migrants, skilled immigrants, who can offer them that opportunity to work long term and continue to survive or continue to ensure the sustainability of dairy farms or agricultural firms. And I believe that um, the Australian government has responded positively to this by initiating the skilled migrant visas and farmers such as dairy farmers can use the DILA, which is the Dairy Industry Labour Agreement to sponsor senior farm plants on their farm. So a mix of both would do. And it's all about ensuring that we continue to have a sustainable agricultural industry. Yeah. I, I, so when I hear you say that, Alberta, I think if I'm a farmer, I've got two choices here. I can yeah. I can continue to recruit in the traditional way that I, I have and look yeah. for that ideal candidate, the one with you know prior farm experience, the one that has grown up locally, um, uh, is um, is is young typically, yeah. um, or um, because I could be waiting a long time right. for that particular Wings. candidate. Uh, or um, I could broaden my scope and say, okay, well, what could be acceptable? What candidate might be able to come into my farm and that I can actually grow into a great employee? And I guess, Sarah, you're a, you're, you're a living uh, example of, um, of what's possible. Um, thank you. So uh, looking at backpackers a bit more uh, specifically, uh, I understand there's lots coming into Australia every year. I think there's well in excess of 100,000 backpackers coming into Australia um, each year on working holiday visas. So, Sarah, if I could ask you a question, why might this group be attracted to dairy? Obviously, it's attractive to dairy because there's so many of them, um, but they may not be there for a long time. They may be there for, you know, more um, seasonal basis. Why Why might this group be attracted to dairy uh, as opposed to they've got lots of other choices. What, what what do you think our proposition is? I suppose like you said before, like when you were back back in, you wanted to just try something completely different. And um, for most people, dairy is completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, we're quite fortunate we actually provide accommodation. And I think that's um, a big help. A lot of the backpackers see the accommodation and think, great, we've got somewhere for three months. Um, it gets them out. A lot of them have got the rooftop tents or just swags. It gets them out of their swag for three months and they get a bit of a com- comfier place. And just the hours, there's no set hours like they can. There's a lot of times they'll approach me and say, Look, can I do a few extra jobs this week? And there's always something to do, you know, and yeah. every day is different as well. And and they still get some work life balance. I think a lot of we try and if they want evenings off together so they can go and look around town. We're very flexible in that. Or if there's a local event on, uh, we'll try and make sure these guys can get out to the local events and enjoy themselves as well. Mm. Yeah. So I, I guess the, the the things I hear about when you say that, uh, there's flexibility, um, there's something that is new and interesting and, and really varied work. Let's not forget that dairy provides them with stable source of income. 
mm. because it's 365 days and is able to meet some of their um, work hours demand if they are looking for an extension of their visas or willingness to stay in Australia. So um, it does give them that option. And let's remember that our farmers are also happy to train backpackers. And that has given them that historical history that if you go to a dairy farmer, they are willing to work with you, even though you don't have any prior work experience. So there's work out there that dairy farmers are happy to train you, get you on board and work with you. And I believe they also meet um, the gaps in farmers' shortages in terms of their peak seasons when they are calving. And they can get them for either short term or long term. So it's been a good mutual um, relationship between pack, backpackers and dairy farmers. Yeah. So uh, Alberto, you, you touch on a couple of really good points there. And the first is, uh, you know, the backpacker community is a very connected community. So good good news yeah. travels really quickly, but, uh, yeah. just as uh, as much as negative news travels travels quickly. So. As a farmer, you know, we want to build up our profile of being, you know, great employers and giving people a go. And so um, if we can do that enough and do that consistently, that yeah. reputation with that community uh, grows, um, I would think, Sarah. Have you have you noticed that, Sarah? Do, do Absolutely. You, do, 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 do you have many sort of repeat visitors um, from yeah, the backpacker group or, or, or referrals from people who are not on? Definitely referrals. Like we've we've been quite fortunate. Um, our last few that have kind of left have approached me and said, look, we're leaving next month, but our friends have just arrived. Um, can they please come? And it's great because if they arrive a week earlier, they can then also help me train them, um, especially to get the, the important points across in their own language as well. So I kind of just a bit of help and support while I'm training them. You've got people that know it as well and, and for them to recommend us, I mean, that's a great, it's a great feeling knowing that they've enjoyed their work here. They're actually happy to send their friends here. Yeah. Uh, and I've yeah. got someone coming back actually next week. He left, he went back to France and he texted me saying, can I come back? So no. um, he's arriving back for a few more months next, which is great. Yeah. Fantastic. So, you know, all that, all that training investment um, uh, is, um, you know, is is pay is pay pays off when you know um, backpackers come back, um, and Alberta, you mentioned another thing with regards to the attraction is the the actual hours, and you know uh, my memory of backpacking is uh, you know these travellers are, are really motivated by working hard for um, concentrated periods of time, and you know def definitely on a dairy farm. Yeah, that opportunity is actually there. So it's not a, an hour here or an hour there. Um, you know, you can you can work some really good hours, um, sort of around your needs and around the needs of the farmer. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we've spoken a little bit about why um, the backpacker community might be attracted to us. Let's let's flip that question now. And, you know, Sarah, you've been a backpacker yourself, um, now a farm manager, and you employ backpackers. What, why, would, why would farmers entertain employing backpackers? What does this group offer, do you think? Well, I think you've touched on it. That they just love to work. They're so motivated. Um, they, they're here to learn something new and then to just do that three months and then they can then use that three months and then go travelling for a little bit. And, and, and the energy and they bring is fantastic and again they don't have the experience and the knowledge but if you can instill that passion and they can have that passion from you their knowledge and experience will grow pretty quick mm. um, and they're learning they know they pick it up quite quickly and they just want to be there they just want to work mm. you know? yeah so so a a backpacker may only be there for a three month period or you know in certain cases uh, may extend that um in your experience how long does it take for uh, someone you know new to a farm to to get up to a reasonable level of productivity that um that you know they can be of real assistance to a farmer so for us um they'll always be paired when they first arrive with a full full term permanent staff um and that just helps them get guidance for a few weeks. Um, 
But again, with a backpacker, I don't expect them to know everything and I don't teach them everything. You have to understand kind of if they're in the pit putting cups on, it's going to take them a few days, just focus on putting cups on and understanding that routine. And um, as long as you don't go in with high expectations, thinking, oh, well, in two days' time, they're going to know everything. Mm. If you expect them to just learn bit by bit, um, I think you then get more out of them. So I think after, but after the first week, I'm quite confident that um, they can do the majority of the job. And after the first three or four weeks, they're at a quite quite a good pace already, and I'm quite confident they can work together. After the two mm. weeks, they're normally working together, and I, I step back quite a bit. Great, great. That's a great story. So, what do you specifically look for in in a candidate? Um, from a from a back uh, in a backpacker candidate, uh, what what are the must haves in your mind that they need to be successful? Well, definitely a, a love, or an enjoyment of being outside around animals. Yeah, someone that doesn't enjoy being outside, it's not it's not going to work. Mm. Um, and I always try and meet them face to face and just let them come to the farm for an hour in a really relaxed setting and just have a general chat like we are now. I think it says a lot about a character just having a general chat and. Um, those backpackers that are asking loads of questions are really curious about what's going on. Yeah. Um, I tend to find that they enjoy the job a bit more because um, they want to know what's going on. They, they, yeah, they just want to learn and the passion shows right from the start. Mm. So that's what we look. We just look for that kind of energy and happiness being outside. If they arrive on the farm and get a bit of dirt on them, they're still smiling. It's a good mm. start. Mm. I, guess, I guess there is no substitute for sort of being face to face and, uh, you know, and if you can meet them on farm and show them what's required and, how, you know, how the farm works, people can sort of self-select uh, either in or out based on that. Yeah. And you're much more likely to get, um, you know, a good fit with regards to, you know, what what the candidate wants and uh, and what your farm needs. I think that we've, we've started that giving that yes or no answer. We don't expect that straight away. I tend to then say, look, there's some really nice cafes in the Clare Valley. Go and explore the Clare Valley. Go and spend a few hours and then let me know. Um, I think that just kind of, they need to make that decision off the farm once they've sat yes. down and actually really thought about it. And yes. So that, for us, that's kind of what's well. We've actually yeah. not had anyone that's said yes and not ended up staying there three months for a long time. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good strategy. Good strategy. Um so if I can ask both of you, what what makes then for a great work experience for both the backpacker and the farmer? And Sarah, just picking up on one of your earlier points, I think you said, uh, you know, come in with reasonable expectations if you're the farmer, they're not going to be able to do everything in a short period of time. Maybe have them concentrate on one particular area and getting some mastery in that particular area. So, you know, with that in mind, what what, what does make for a great experience Um for, for both the farmer and and the backpacker? I think just treating them as kind of like a fam not a family environment, but a really fun, friendly environment. Like we have regular staff barbecues um, and I think that just goes along with it. They don't feel segregated. They don't feel like they're just here because they're a backpacker. They're part of our team. We like we embrace them. We need them. Like we enjoy having them here. Um. I think one massive thing for me is I believe that trust can be gained and can be lost, but I don't think it should have to be earned. Like when I've got new staff coming in, there's a level of trust already there. And I think with that comes respect. And I think that just creates a really good environment for us all to, to work in well together. Mm. Well, that's uh, uh, that's an interesting philosophy and philosophy I share. Uh, so you, you go into that arrangement uh, with uh, with a, a level of trust, and yeah. you can always you can always build on that trust, and and trust can be lost, of course. Um, but you you don't start from zero with that trust. You actually start with a reasonable, healthy level of trust in the relationship to um to and goodwill to to make it work. Absolutely. Alberta, you know you work across all farmers in South Australia, and what when you when you talk to farmers, what uh what what do you hear with regards to what makes a great experience? How do you create the right environment for um, for new employees to thrive? Yeah, I, I believe in what Sarah said about setting clear expectations, and that is from both the farmer and the backpacker as well. That has been number one. 
being said, if you don't set clear expectation, then people will not be able to understand the details of their role and what exactly they're supposed to do on farm. But I believe there are farmers who have really succeeded in creating that um, good workplace environment, just as Sarah said, is providing them with a form of connection to the farm and to the farm community as well. So she asked them, go explore somewhere, go to the cafe, see what's happening. And once they're able to fall in love with the community, with the outdoor lifestyle, then they know that this is a role for me. I'm not just here to work and earn money, but I'm here to build a life, to experience that cultural heritage that Australia holds. So building that cultural connection with them is good and mm. understanding their cultural background, where they are coming from, language barrier is key. Are you able to communicate effectively with a person? Do you have to write it down? Do you have to send them a text message and all that? So communication is also key. Understand the level of the English language proficiency of your candidate and how best to communicate with them. So, and just like Sarah said, treating them just like any employee, fair, fair giving them all their rights, working rights, and they being paid well is what creates that environment for both parties. And if you employ all of these, I'm sure that um, both parties will go out and give them referrals that this is a good working environment. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I hear that from uh, coming from both of you. So no one wants to be sort of treated as a labour unit, just a labour unit, they want to be a team member and as part of being a team member, they want to experience everything that a team member has and that's not just work, but that's it's uh, that's the fun that goes with work and um, and the connections that, that go inside and outside of work. So, very good. Um, uh, a thought came to mind uh, when you're talking about that uh, because you were talking about language difficulties there, uh, Alberta. Um uh, farm safety is a critical yeah. issue for us. We work in, you know, a really, unfortunately, uh, it's it's a very hazardous industry. Uh, agriculture is the most hazardous industry in Australia. So how how do we keep new employees and uh, maybe employees uh, with no prior experience um, safe? Sarah, I, I'm, I'm, I might ask you first and then Alberta, I'll throw to you with regards to what uh, Dairy Australia can offer with regards to um, support in that area. Obviously, like, yeah, the language barrier, you need to make sure that obviously that communication is effective. Uh, so your induction might take a little bit longer. Uh, it's not something that can be rushed or should be rushed. It needs to be really thorough and hands-on. I think the more hands-on it is with demonstrations, uh, not just sitting and talking to the person, walking around the farm so they can see it. Uh, a lot more visual learning goes on when there is a language barrier there. Um, so the more visual it is and actually walking around the farm. I do a farm walk with every new employee and things so they all are aware of, yes, they will be driving the tractor straight away, but they need to be aware of where the tractor main route is. They mm -hmm. know where that machinery is going to be and things like that and Mm. Quad bikes, there's, uh, we'll spend a lot of time going through the bike and just watching them ride some short distances before I'm happy for them to go in the paddocks by themselves out of sight. Um, they'll do, yes, it's very very much visual and just let, however mm -hmm. it needs to be. You, you don't let someone go until you feel confident. Yeah. I need to feel confident that they're going to be safe. And and I, th I think you mentioned earlier on that you uh, you couple or buddy that uh, new employee with a more experienced employee um, yeah. for the first for the first two weeks? Yeah. Uh, not always two weeks, but until I'm com comfortable. Like sometimes some backpackers after five or six days have, they've just really picked it up and great, they're off, off to go. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, access to, uh, you know, more, um, you know, specialised sort of plants such as tractors or, uh, Obviously, it's it's a no no. It, it's it's not yeah. something that that you would sort of entertain, um, just like you wouldn't a, a new employee coming from anywhere else. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alberta, you know that that this issue of farm safety is is a really critical one for our industry because it impacts the attractiveness of our industry. What 
What is Dairy Australia doing um, and what support can they offer farmers with regards to um, keeping employees safe on farm? Yeah, um, I mean, farm safety is one of the priority areas for Dairy Australia. And um, there are several workshops going on in various regions on farm safety that farmers can attend and can also bring in their new employees. Let's not also forget about people in their website and the farm safety manuals that provides farmers with all the safety protocols and it's some induction templates and farm policies that they can use to properly induct their new employees on the farm. So the farm safety manual has 14 sections and it covers everything from tractors, farm vehicles, working environment, several of them. So any portion, power, electrical, any safety area on the dairy farm has been catered for and farmers can always refer to it to be able to provide the right environment for candidates to work in. And I believe that we also have our online platform, BN Light, that has a self-paced learning experience that a new employee can go through by themselves. We have safety on the dairy farm and also working with livestock. And if they haven't even worked with livestock before, they have videos, it's an online platform where the new generation, the older people can also use to learn about some of these safety protocols on farm. So I think we have the right resources to support mm. farmers that the farmers can use themselves, the new employee can use all alone by themselves and both of them can use it together. When it comes to uh, mastitis management or what we call capsule cast off, the farmer and the employee come body to do that. And as Sarah said, all of them cannot be done just by the employee alone, but with assistance and the ongoing support of the employer. Mm. And it's not just a one off something, it has to be regularly reviewed, checked upon to see that what we told the employee is being implemented or not and that will build a good um workplace safety culture yeah. right okay oh, so so if i'm hearing this correctly uh you know you spoke about the online resources through the people in yeah. dairy website um and the online or hard copy resources with regards to farm safety manual yeah. farm safety starter kit um i think you also mentioned uh there were um, uh, cor- courses um, conducted through uh, regional offices with regards to safety and our the Dairy Australia's learning management system in light, um, which is available to everyone, uh, employees, farmers, um, the wider public if they want to, uh, to, to learn more um, about specific areas and critical set areas of, um, of farm safety. That's great. Sounds really comprehensive. Um. So, Sarah, getting back to you, if you were anyone listening now and if they were interested in now sort of looking at a backpacker um, to, to employ, how how would you suggest they go about tapping into those communities to get interest? Um, so we, we use a lot of uh, Gumtree. Um, um, and sometimes I don't even have to put an advert on Gumtree. Sometimes there's people there saying, look, hey, I'm a backpacker, I want to come and work. So sometimes you can find people on there looking for the jobs. And um, But again, word of mouth goes a long way. Like I said, I sometimes don't have to hire people uh, or actively look for people because people are coming approaching me. Uh, old backpackers have said, look, can I hand your number out if people ask? And I've said, yeah, that's fine. Um, so word of mouth goes a long way, I think. Mm. But to get started, Gumtree... Um, I think it's a good place to start. Or the dairy website, there's a Dairy Jobs Matters website as well that um, people could advertise on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the Dairy's Jobs Board. I I guess you'd mentioned uh, at any one time you've got around six backpackers working for you, so that creates a little community in itself. And, you know, there's referrals to friends and family and anyone else sort of uh, coming that way. So uh, that would certainly certainly help. Alberta, maybe at a broader level, what what advice could you give farmers with regards to tapping into those communities apart from gum tree? Are there any other things that that they you think they should look at? I think social media is now a rising tool. So Facebook, 
Instagram, Twitter, yeah. um, the backpackers communities that we've talked about, the talent communities that are online. Um, we have these daily classifieds that people are now posting their jobs and you get answers there all the time. I know yeah. people, I mean, there are so many hostels or accommodation sites that you can find backpackers. They're just printing a bullet of who you are and what role you're looking for. You can get a few people there. And if you're going old or backwards, you could go with travel agencies or like Sarah will be going to England quite recently. You could just give her a flyer, but give it to some of your friends who have intention of coming to Australia. Let them give me a call. That's one of them. And any local events, we are at Korea Expos, community events. These are all good avenues. You have tourists coming into Australia all the time. You don't know if they've come to stay or they're going back. So any opportunity you can use that to get backpackers and holiday makers joining you on farm. Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks, Alberta. Um, so look, we, we're just about out of time, but uh, if we could spend a little bit of uh, the last uh, the remaining time that we've got left, talk about onboarding and induction. Uh, I mean, first impressions are really important. We've spoken about the critical uh, importance of being safe on farm, and that's part of the induction. But from an onboarding point of view of new employees who have never worked on a farm before, Alberta, if I can ask you, what 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 can um, Dairy Australia do? Uh, what 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 is out there to assist farmers with regards to you know something they may have never had to have done before themselves? Yeah, I say um, Dairy Australia is playing a critical role in this area. Um, knowing very well that an employee cannot be effective on their first day at work and effectiveness comes by time and it comes by training. So the real Australia has a lot of induction and recruitment processes, steps by which farmers can use to properly recruit backpackers and to properly induct them. And most of these steps and resources can be found in our people in dairy website uh, SK, which is the Employment Startup Kit, and the Farm Safety Manual, as I mentioned earlier on, with resources, templates that they can build on. But with all these resources, you'll find common, which is common to it, is that um, I'll borrow the words of David Beckett, who says that induction is not just about content, but it's more about building a connection with your employee. And on the first day of goal, just like we've mentioned, some of them safe to be a priority, walking them around the farm, as Sarah has mentioned, making them comfortable, showing them every corner of it. Well, machines we have, that's one of them. Basic things like having the contact details of the employee, the employee where they leave, how to contact them in case of emergency letting them know their road style, when are they going to be working, where will they be off, how to apply for leave. And of course, let them not forget about the contract. Giving them a contract on their face, things so that they know what's expected of them, their job description, job role. These simple things provide them with an understanding of what they know and letting them know about their rights and responsibilities as an employee and your rights and responsibilities as an employee. So I believe that we have all these resources already set up and there's the support of fair work, safe work across Australia that employees and employers can also contact in case of anything. Mm. That, that, that's, a, that's a great answer. I particularly liked your, um, your point with regards to onboarding and induction. Uh, it's not just about a checklist. And if you want checklists and tools, you'll find plenty on the People in Dairy website. I, or I guess if everything fails, you can contact your, your local Dairy Australia regional office. Um, but it's less about the checklist. The checklist provides some structure, but it's more about the connection. And I think in listening to you and, and particularly listening to Sarah, it is all about connection because if you establish a great connection, you you set the you set the foundations for a great uh, experience on farm for both you, the, the farmer or the farm manager, and and for the employee. Um, that, that's great. Um, any any final words? Any words of wisdom uh, from uh, from either of you 
with regards to um, anything we ha- we haven't covered. So if someone's, uh, you know, if there's a farmer sort of intently looking forward to uh, perhaps uh, employing a backpacker, any sort of final pieces of advice you could offer, Sarah? Um, I'd probably just say give someone a chance. Like for, for me, I was hired as a backpacker with no experience and I've now make, trying to make it my like career. Like I found a, a love that I never knew was there. So if you could give that to somebody else, um, it's fantastic. Yeah, just give just give them the chance. Uh, yeah. Give them that community and they'll they'll yeah, let them, let them shine. Yeah. And and I guess that's that's one thing we didn't discuss, but uh uh you know, we we enter these employment relationships on the basis that it will be short term. But there's always the prospect that it may turn into something yeah. longer. Uh, you know, you may fall in love with the area and um and have an ongoing sort of connection um, with the work and uh, find yourself like Sarah has and four years later um, heavily sort of, you know, embedded in the farm that she works and, um, and uh, you know, really engaged. Um, okay. No worries. Alberta, any final words? Um, I would say that dairy is a good place to work. I'm a migrant myself and I'm, I've learned along the way and I will continue to learn. So... Just like Sarah said, give an opportunity to someone who has a previous background or with no background in dairy, but also remember that you have the responsibility to build that relationship and connection with them to make sure that they have that good experience on farm. Okay. I think they're great final words, Alberta. Um, So thank you both. Thanks, Sarah, for for sharing your experience. It's been um, fascinating to um, hear about your journey and uh, Alberta, uh, it's been great talking with you uh, with regards to you know what support uh, is there for farmers um, with regards to this particular area. So um, uh, we're just about out of time. So thanks, everyone, for listening in and um, you. stay tuned for our next session. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. To find out more about how Dairy Australia is supporting farmers with employing and managing people, and to access employment resources, visit the People, Skills and Capabilities section of the Dairy Australia website. We have also placed this and other related links in the episode notes. We hope that you have enjoyed this Dairy Pod episode. If you have any questions or ideas for future episodes, you can get in contact with us by emailing dairypod at dairyaustralia.com.au. Thank you very much for listening and bye for now. 